The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Let us greet one another with words of hope, words that come from the wellspring of love flowing within us because of our encounter with the living Christ. The peace of Christ be with you always. Come out of the darkness of despair into the brightness of God's transforming love. We praise God for God's presence within us. Prepare your hearts and spirits to receive God's mercy and healing. We thank God for God's mercy toward us. Come, let us praise and worship God who is always with us. Thanks be to God at all times and in all places. Amen. Blessed be God, the one who forms us, Jesus, who bears the cross, the Spirit, who makes our joy complete. Amen. Let us bow before God in humility, confessing our sin. Steadfast and faithful God, you have revealed the ways of justice, yet we fail to follow you. We are overwhelmed by the world's violence and suffering. 
we are afraid to risk what we have for the sake of others. For the harm we have caused, no one and on no one forgive us. For the unjust demands we place on others and on your creation, forgive us. For the ways we turn away from you and our neighbor, forgive us. Lead us back to you and set us on the right path. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. Beloved in Christ, God's justice stretches beyond all understanding. God's compassion is beyond compare. In Jesus, God is always making a new way for us. In Christ, you are already and always forgiven. Amen. enliven and preserve your church with your perpetual mercy. Without your help, we mortals will fail. Remove far from us everything that is harmful and lead us toward all that gives life and salvation through Jesus Christ, our Savior and our Lord. Amen. Our first reading is taken from Ezekiel chapter 33. So you, mortal, I have made a sentinel for the house of Israel. Whenever you hear a word from my mouth, you shall give them warning from me. If I say to the wicked, O wicked ones, you shall surely die, and you do not speak to warn the wicked to turn from their ways, the wicked shall die in their iniquity, but their blood I will require at your hand. But if you warn the wicked to turn from their ways, and they do not turn from their ways, the wicked shall die in their iniquity, but you will have saved your life. Now you, mortal, say to the house of Israel, Thus you have said, Our transgressions and our sins weigh upon us, and we waste away because of them. How then can we live? Say to them, As I live, says the Lord God, I have no pleasure in the death of the wicked, but that the wicked turn from their ways and live. Turn back, turn back from your evil ways, for why will you die, O house of Israel? 
The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. And our psalm for today is Psalm 119. Teach me, O Lord, the way of your statutes, and I shall keep it to the end. Give me understanding, and I shall keep your teaching. I shall keep it with all my heart. Lead me in the path of your commandments, for that is my desire. Incline my heart to your decrees, and not to unjust gain. Turn my eyes from beholding falsehood. Give me life in your way. Fulfill your promise to your servant, which is for those who fear you. Turn away the reproach that I dread, because your judgments are good. Behold, I long for your commandments. By your righteousness, enliven me. And our second reading is taken from Romans chapter 13. Owe no one anything except to love one another, for the one who loves another has fulfilled the law. The commandments, you shall not commit adultery, you shall not murder, you shall not steal, you shall not covet, and any other commandment are summed up in this word, love your neighbor as yourself. Love does no wrong to a neighbor, therefore love is the fulfilling of the law. Besides this, you know what time it is, how it is now the moment for you to wake from sleep. For salvation is nearer to us now than when we became believers. The night is far gone, the day is near. Let us then lay aside the works of darkness and put on the armor of light. Let us live honorably as in the day, not in reveling and drunkenness, not in debauchery and licentiousness, not in quarreling and jealousy. Instead, put on the Lord Jesus Christ and make no provision for the flesh to gratify its desires. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our Gospel today is taken from St. Matthew, the 18th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said to the disciples, If another member of the church sins against you, go and point out the fault when the two of you are alone. If the member listens to you, you have regained that one. But if you are not listened to, take one or two others along with you, so that every word may be confirmed by the evidence of two or three witnesses. If the member refuses to listen to them, tell it to the church. And if the offender refuses to listen even to the church, let such a one be to you as a Gentile and a tax collector. Truly, I tell you, whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven, and whatever you loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. Again, truly, I tell you, if two of you agree on earth about anything you ask, it will be done for you by my Father in heaven. For where two or three are gathered in my name, I am there among them. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Let us pray. O Lord, that the words of our mouths and the meditation of our hearts be acceptable unto you, our Rock and our Redeemer. Amen. Where two or three are gathered, it is hard not to look at some of the churches that, are, that neighbor us and wonder what they are doing right and we are doing wrong. Their church seems so much fuller than ours. We hear stories of all the cool programs that they are running and all the people that they are drawing in, and then we look at our own church. Too often we see the reflections of what we once were, a community church that brought generations together and acted as a center point to the lives of many. We remember those days and we look now and see more empty pews than full pews and wonder what we have done wrong. What choice did we make that led us down this path? Why are so many of our churches ready to fold in a matter of years? We look around and mourn for the lost days of community glory, the days that we wish we could return to. It's hard not to mourn. 
But even in our mourning, God is still there. God is still there, offering us some measure of peace, even as the institutional life of our church seems to be numbered. And the peace that God is offering is not a false promise that the ELCIC will rise again to former states of glory. It is not a promise that we will find a way to preserve the churches we still have left and help them to flourish once more. The promise we receive is much simpler and much more powerful. The promise is this. The Holy Spirit is with us, and where two or three are gathered, God is present. Where two or three are gathered. Jesus doesn't go out to build a megachurch. In fact, some of the most powerful stories of Jesus come from those moments when he is just with his disciples, or healing a person, or preaching to a small gathering. He is present even in the most intimate of gatherings. God is most certainly present in the gathering of a small group of people where we can share one another's stories, our burdens, and our joys, where two or three are gathered. That isn't to say that any of this will save our churches. It is simply to say that God is present in the life of community, even when that community can barely fill the first two pews of a church. God is a lover of community. God is found there in truly poignant ways, whether there are 3,000 or three. And that is a promise that we are asked to hold on to. God is with us. Even when the old structures slide into ruin and the old ways turn into memory. Community in whatever form it, that it takes is so important to God that if we even have Jesus offering us a means to hold that community together. It is a process that is meant to reconcile harm done by people within a community. It is a multi-step process that is meant to give a relationship all the chance in the world to succeed, but it also acknowledges that in the end, if reconciliation is not possible, then sometimes ending a relationship is the only option left. It is a hard truth offered by the text. Sometimes community cannot be salvaged due to internal reasons. It is lamentable, but unavoidable when our own brokenness precludes reconciliation. Such a split may, in fact, save a great deal of grief and prevent further damage to a community. Jesus does not romanticize the idea of community, and neither should we. Community is hard work, but it is holy work. Sometimes, oftentimes, community changes. It shifts from what we once knew. It grows smaller. It loses members that need to seek community elsewhere. It morphs into something we may not recognize. But always the promise is there. God's promise assuring us that God is with us. Anywhere that two or three have gathered, and so we continue the good, hard, holy work of community in church and throughout our lives. There was a church, one of ours, that was diminishing in size and had been for a long time. They were dealing with hurt and anger over a few controversial decisions and decided to take one last chance at staying at church where they were. It wasn't an easy decision and in hindsight it didn't change anything. They still closed and the site upon which they existed is now completely gone. But in those few years they gave themselves. They did many wonderful things. Already engaged in the community, they continued their good work, even finding some new avenues of ministry. They celebrated the Eucharist together and they laughed together. They argued together and they ate together. They celebrated the birth of Jesus every Christmas and they celebrated Good Friday and Easter Sunday every spring. They invited guest speakers and hosted meals for their community, and there was God in their midst, even when some Sunday saw all of 15 to 20 people in the pews. And they helped train a new seminary grad in the realities of pastoral ministry. The pastor would go on and continue to serve, remembering always the lessons learned at their first pastoral call. This could describe a lot of churches in their final years, and that is the point. There was something beautiful about the way this church continued its community, even when it became apparent that their hope of remaining where they were was not going to bear fruit. They did so much good in those last years, and in the end, when a church decides to just open up and embrace all that makes what it is, 
it can still do and be wonderful things. It can still be an instrument of grace in the world because God is with that church, no matter how small, just as surely as God is with the large church. To be clear, the small church may well disappear. It may close its door and its property might be sold and any physical reminder of the space it once inhabited might be erased. But the good that the community did still exists and those who are part of it can find other communities and they can continue living out God's call. It might be hard to hear, but it is something we must accept. The church is changing and much will be lost as it does. It will be easy to mourn and right to mourn when that moment comes, but we can't stay in that moment. I was recently watching a movie where one character was lamenting the fact that another of the main characters had died to save her life. She was racked with guilt. She's dead because of me. But another character quickly responded with, no, you are alive because of her. Now that has nothing to do with what I have been talking about save this. It is easy to look at the life of the church and say, as the character did, our church is dying because we didn't do this or make that decision. Rather, as the second character in the movie reframed it, perhaps it is better to say, because we were a church, all of this good happened, and we worship together, and we laugh together, and we give thanks to God together. Thanks be to God for that privilege and that joy. It is easy to mourn what was lost, but to state it in yet another way, this time with the words of Dr. Zeus, don't be sad it is over, be glad it happened. May we treasure our community no matter how small. May we know that we are still capable of doing what God has called us to do through God's help. And may we give thanks for every moment of community that we enjoy with our siblings in Christ. For every moment we go spend with them is a true blessing. Amen. In Christ, you have heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation. We believe in him and are marked with the seal of the promised Holy Spirit. Living together in trust and hope, we confess our faith. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead, on the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven, he is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. 
Remembering the caring and generous works of God, we pray for the church creation and the needs of our neighbors. Hold us accountable, O God. Show your church where repentance is needed and lead us in paths of intentional compassion and listening. Help us extend hands of reconciliation and care, especially in relationships with other Christians and people of other faiths. Merciful God, receive our prayer. Reveal your miracles to us, O God. Move us to cherish you as we behold the wonders of creation. Renew the seas and the soil, the forests and the tr creatures that live in them. Turn us to ways of living that seek Earth's thriving. Merciful God, receive our prayer. Inspire us to lead with honor, O God. Guide judges and legislators, police and, and government officials to create and uphold just laws. Move us to treat all people with dignity and guide our conversations with one another. Merciful God, receive our prayer. Help us comfort those who suffer, O God. Reassure any who are harmed by the wicked acts of others. Bring peace to all who are vulnerable, frightened, despairing, or sick. We take a moment now to remember people who rest upon our hearts, those who we care for, those who are part of our community, remembering especially Regina Abend, Christine Bauer, Taryn Covey, and those we, we name now, now either aloud or in the silence of our hearts. Guard their waking and their sleeping. Merciful God, receive our prayer. Awaken us, O God, challenge and encourage your people to value the vocation to which each is called. We pray for all discerning new possibilities on changing employment. In all our diverse callings, teach us to love our neighbor above all else. Merciful God, receive our prayer. O God, we give you thanks for the start of a new school year and we pray blessings upon both teachers and students. Give them a good year ahead, O Lord. We pray too for the continued threat of wildfire and we pray that they would soon be done and people would be safe to return home and to put this time of fear and, and uncertainty behind them. Thank you for all those who have diligently fought those fires and given up and sacrificed so much for the sake of others. Bless the farmers as they continue with their harvest and pray that you would give them good weather so that they may be able to lift the bounty you have given them and be able to celebrate another year and rest for the year to come. Thank you for their diligence as they continue in their profession and in their vocation to feed the world. Merciful God, receive our prayer. Be our hope, O God. We remember with thanksgiving your disciples who died in faith. May their trust in your promise be our protection and our hope. Merciful God, receive our prayer. Remember us according to your steadfast love as we offer these and the prayers of our heart. Trusting in your compassion, may no one through Jesus Christ. Amen. God and community, holy and one, may we never be apart from you even as we pray as we are taught. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen.
God of power, God of plenty, all things belong to you. We bring your gifts to the table that all might be fed. Form us into the body of your beloved Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. Receive the blessing, the God of glory, Jesus Christ, name above all names, and the Spirit who lives in you, bless you now and forever. Amen. A few announcements. Remember, a reminder that uh, for those who knew Rennie uh, Turnquist, that, that our funeral will be held on Monday, September 18th at 11 a.m. at Hosanna Lutheran Church. Anybody who wishes to go can arrange for a ride um, through the office or through Susan Boyle. Just a reminder too that uh, next week a lot of our stuff gets rolling again. The Bible studies and witness committee, confirmation, piata forma, Dor Dorcas circle, all kind of kick off in the next week or two. And on that note, we have our Super Sunday kickoff event on September 17th. Where We'll have pies and coffee and games and all, this fun, all kinds of fun and assorted things to do. So if you can make it out for that, that would be wonderful. We have a birthday this week as well, Violet Brand. So let us say a word of prayer for her. God of grace and mercy, we lift up before you today, Violet, and ask that you be with her, O Lord, as she celebrates her day of birth. May be filled with the blessing of family and friends. And may your, your, her year ahead be filled with the same. Thank you, O Lord, for all the gifts she has given and continues to give, all the ways in which she is a light of your love in all that she does. And again, O Lord, we ask that you bless her year ahead. And so we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. I hope you have a good week ahead. It's certainly looking glorious out there as the crops have turned and the trees are turning and we truly in, are well into fall and although kind of mournful the summer is is over we look forward to a new season and new beginnings and where god may lead so i hope you have a good week ahead and we'll talk to you soon bye for now
Go in peace. God is at work in you. Thanks be to God.